Good evening and welcome to the um, February 15th, 2023 meeting of the um, Town of Eisenhower Planning Board. Um, so, um, Jim, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, Jim Bacena is a planning board member. Jim Manabricus, planning board member. Jason Mencher, planning board member. Christy Adana, a planning board attorney, filling in for Kathy Flynn. Um, Valerie Nostro, planning board consultant. The NCRC, a consulting engineer, the planning board. Sandy Nelly, secretary for the planning board. And I'm Carolyn Stevens, chair of the planning board. Um, the first evening, the first I want to see what is the uh, village of Osning in the book water treatment plant. Um, we're just here to uh, review a resolution. We have to uh, continue, a public so hearing. Continue public up. hearing. Um, so, first, we'll ask if there's anybody here to speak about with respect to the public hearing. Um, um, with respect to the resolution, should we close the public yeah. hearing? Yeah, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, are, are you here to speak on the? Um, I'm just here to hear about the um, the project on the Stony Lodge. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, sorry. I second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of closing the public hearing? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 And I don't get this well. Okay. The public hearing is closed. Um, now, the resolution. Um, um, I have one, I have a question, and I'm asking it because I think Donna on our planning board would ask the same thing. On page four to five, there's a landscaping condition we talked about if things die in the first, second, or third year. Yep. The last component of it that says um, I'm replaced with another native species suitable for the site conditions, who decides what's suitable, just so that's clear? Because I think Donna would ask that question if you would. I think the, uh, well, the town has an environmental consultant that they use uh, right. to review the Okay, so it would be if understood implicit in it that someone from the town would have say so. Yeah. Okay. I wrote this. That was my only comment. Um, there's one other comment I did have from Donna, and that was with respect to the um, removal of an invasive species right by me. Um, and Concern about whether it, that no uh, chemicals be used to remove it near the drinking water. Um, so we can, if the board is interested in, uh, we can maybe add a condition, but that wouldn't be a condition of site plan no. approval. No. So it might just be a condition in general. Uh, general condition um, that all any chemical or no chemical removal of red mighty should take place. I'm I'm of the opinion that this applicant that runs each plant would know not to do that. If we know would they be inclined to do that? I don't think a condition is necessary because of the nature of who the applicant is and what the concern is, but I'm open to other suggestions by the board. Um, Thank you. Any other comments? We have a little closet in there, so we can keep the chemicals off site. So, I mean, I mean, I can, I mean, I can easily add that no chemical removal of Phragmites. The difficulty is that they are supposed to work on some removal of Phragmites, so right. they have to be mechanical. Yeah. And then if they can't do mechanical, right. we're just okay. going to leave it. Yeah, I think. Would you like me to? Sure. Yeah. I mean, 
Do I need the microphone or can I just participate from here? Thank you again. It's it's nice to get to this point. Finally, it's been a it's been a long fall and the fun is just getting started. So um before I do address that, I wanted to thank the um town board for the time spent on reviewing our project. It's much appreciated. That said, um you're correct. We already um uh highly sensitive to chemical use around the uh, the watershed, mm -hmm. not just coming into our watershed, but also the watershed that goes out to the Croton River. Right. Um, and um, just to give you an idea of how we handle things in our watershed right now, we have our dam inspected every year and vegetation around an earthen dam, which is structural. Um, we do have invasive species and we do not use any herbicides around, out, around the rest for it. It's all, um, they, they do different things like uh, hot water and and just pulling it out the old fashioned way and getting the root out and, and really just staying on top of it. And that's the trick around those type of facilities. But um, they're highly sensitive, particularly to nitrogen and phosphorus and other fertilizers that we use for any, um, uh, to, to be productive with vegetation. So we don't do any of that near, near our watershed because we realize what the uh, result could be. So you can add it and we'll gladly um, follow through with that. Thank you. But well, we're able to vote on the resolution, yeah, right? yeah. even okay. just with the understanding. Okay. Just as amendment. Yeah. Do you have any other? Um, just with respect to the planting, um, when, when it, um, the, the plantings need to be replaced. That may not be required to wait until the following spring in order to plant. Okay. So, do we want to just amend that to say individual species that survive beyond the first or second, the first, second, or third year shall be replaced? Uh, at the appropriate time or the during appropriate... the appropriate growing season? Right. Yeah. As soon as practicable. So at the appropriate time during the appropriate growing season as soon as practical, right? Seems to cover everything. <laughs> yeah, I think that does it. Um, we have a motion to I'll make the motion to approve. Amend, as amend, amended. As amended. I'll yeah. second the motion. And, um, I vote yes. I vote yes. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Um, we're done. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. The next item is um, River Noel and um, for the uh, planning board to accept the uh, document for review. Just for the record, on, yeah. on the um, on the agenda, it referred to supplemental draft environmental impact statement, but it's actually the supplemental final environment. Right. So, just so the board knows, um, right now, this um, the document, the final environmental impact statement document was submitted to the board. Uh, tonight, you're going to authorize your consultants to begin the technical review of the document. Um, we will have, uh, you know, our memos back to you for the March meeting. And um, at that point in time, if there are any other changes necessary for the FEIS, then we'll relay that to the applicant. Um, if not, you know, then then you'll be able to accept the FEIS. Um, if if there is to be some additional changes, again, those would just be incorporated, and then you know, with the anticipation, then the FEIS would be accepted. The FEIS is the board's document, so. We just want to make sure you're going to be comfortable with how the applicant responds to the comments. So if you, um, you know, as we begin our technical review of that, please also review it yourself. And if you see anything in particular that you have concerns with, let me know, and we can work that into our comments back to the Um, and with that, we'll move on to 
and it's not of a technical nature. It has to do, but I can see the crafter as an applicant's data. That's fine. Okay. Sure. Um, Sandy, you know, I share my screen. Do you have, um, is your camera on? Camera. Green button. Sure. You can unmute. Uh, green so button. Soon on. We have the, do, you, do you have the green button at the bottom? The screen share? Ah, uh, there it is. So. Okay, do you want to please introduce yourself? Yes, hi. Uh, Glenn Vetramile, Hudson Park Group, the sponsor of this project. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been asked to prepare a present this quick um, a uh, quick overview. We can make some changes to uh, the townhouse project, and just for people um, who may be dialing into this presentation. Just a couple of additional slides so we can uh, explain what's going on. So the prior plan that we had submitted originally was 188 unit uh, multifamily. And then uh, almost two years ago now, we um, uh, changed to a 55 plus townhouse condominium that's 95 units. That was the prior plan, uh, Adirondack style project. And then um, I also thought just a quick refresher on what's there today. This is the existing building that's been highly modified over the years, has a lot of deferred maintenance, water damage. This is the northern boundary along Grandview. This is looking at that northern boundary and that building in the background is a former um, recreation center for the hospital. This is the southeast boundary uh, near Pershing. And then an admin, old admin building and maintenance garage right there. And then lastly, the southwest corner alongside Croton Dam Road. That wall in the background is literally alongside Croton Dam Road. So we presented the new plan, uh, 95 unit townhouse project 85 market rate units and affordable and this is guided by uh, hud guidelines and also um, all of our documents will be filed with the new york state attorney general's office so we submitted things the beginning of 21 a whole new set of uh, scoping uh, new eis new traffic documents were done again and then the new plan which this is, uh, we were very careful to preserve the front meadow that runs alongside Croton Dam Road, and also to maintain green buffers around the entire site. This is an entry building uh, that'll be the um, community building. We'll have a fitness center in it um, and, and common areas for the sharing of the residents. And then this is the inspiration of what we uh, the direction we're thinking of for that particular building. So in presenting the revised townhouse plan, um, the town board and the planning board uh, had some things they wanted us to address. Um, there are 10 uh, affordable condominium units. They wanted them to not be on the east side of the site. They wanted them to be sprinkled throughout the project. I'll show you where that is in a minute. They were also concerned about the heights of the units that abutted First and Second Avenues. We'll address that in a second, show you some slides of that. And then uh, also the density of those units along First and Second, and, and also expanding the setbacks. Then the other concern was that there'd be a broader spectrum of price points and lower priced units. Um, and I'll point out where those are beyond the affordable units. So this is the um, plan prior to these modifications. 
And um, if I can do a pointer, can you see my no? The uh, I have a pointer here. So the this is the this is First Avenue, Second Avenue, and then these are the units that were the express concern units. The thing that I want to point out also is we've been careful to maintain green buffers uh, with um, Pershing Grandview up here, and then Narragansett back here, and then uh, Memorial Park here, Veterans Park, and then Crutland Daniel. So we've been very careful to maintain green buffers here. There are actually, most of this is currently paved, and there are some existing buildings in here that are coming down. And similarly, there's a building that sits up here that when I pointed out to you before, that was the recreation building. So those buffers have been expanded all along the north end, the south end of the site, and over on the east end. Okay. Once again, this um, so this is a little bit delayed, but it gives you better understanding of the uh, the green buffers. So the next slide will show how we modified these units here. So that prior plan showed we had 18 units lined up here. We now have only 10 and they are duplexes. They're essentially larger units with a common wall, still condos, the five of them lower in profile and further set back from first and second avenues. This is the prior uh, elevation of that edge. This is Second Avenue. And this is the uh, units previously. And this is what we've done today. We've set them back another 10, 15 feet. We stepped them back. We've also articulated the outsides with decks, uh, stepping back the roof, et cetera, and then creating more divisions between each of those buildings. Okay. Can you talk about the retaining wall a little bit? Sure. There are retaining walls. I have a cross section that I'm going to okay. show to. I think that Perfect. may give you a little bit easier idea of understanding that. So this is kind of if you were walking along Second Avenue and looking up to the hillside. The, the current um, Hospital buildings are actually about 15 to 20 feet taller than our tallest building up on the peak. Okay. We've been careful to keep it not so tall. So, this is looking from Veterans Park. In the foreground is uh, Narragansett. We do have, we will have an emergency access that will be a weight bearing surface, but not paved. For emergency vehicles are only with a gate that will be only accessed by emergency vehicles. Uh, I'll get to the section in a second. Um, and then a few of the renderings of some of the units. They're um, all in a contemporary farmhouse style, which is very popular today. All will be in hardy board. On the exterior with battens and then uh, some standing seam metal roofs in different locations. A few of our units, because the so the site slopes, we have access through the lowest level with parking. And also, if somebody wants to have a, a second office, if there's a, a couple that both want offices, you can put one down on the lower level, plus uh, we will. Uh, offer the opportunity of small gyms. All of these units will have four by four um, uh, closets on each level. So that if you want to put in a small pneumatic elevator, you can do that as well. These are uh, some of the uh, affordable units. And then this is a cross section that Dolly was wondering about. So 
this unit here, that is uh, the closest unit on 2nd Avenue. And it looks across to, to the back side of um, some of those townhouses we were talking about. There's an outline there of an exist, the building that exists today. And then um, so that gives you a sense of it. That slope goes up. And then this top section is this is um, uh, Pershing down here, and then the hill all the way up to the closest unit up on top. Okay. And then can you just explain to the board how you reduce the overall height of the retaining wall? Yeah. Um, well, by setting it back, we have two. We So we have a step back kind of retaining wall, which are about six feet and six feet. And then there is, we may be able to, through the excavation of the site, we may be able to also put gravel and such down in this low point to literally, that doesn't show it here, but to level it off even more. So we also, we think the perception, this house, the closest houses are have their site drops off. So the back of those houses, uh, the lower level is, um, have no windows, there are the garages. And so the, our concern was, or issue that we wanted to address was what is their view line? And their view line will be approximately right into here. And we will be putting in trees and a variety of um, uh, shrubs that are um, grasses probably, we put in hardy grasses and then that will be irrigated as well. Something we talked to ad nauseum with Donna, who at the next stage get there, the um, site planning, formal site planning. I'm sure she'll be very involved in that. And then, you know, we have been getting a number of calls from people who are in the community who um, are retiree or getting close to retirement age. And are very interested in these units. Uh, I think one of the things that's very appealing to them is that all the exteriors will be maintained by the association. All the gutters, lawn cutting, all that maintained. Um, if you go away, the association can monitor your house. Um, we know from experience with other similar projects in the county and, and around the area that is a very deep uh, market for uh, age-targeted townhouses. Then last piece of this is the school district. Uh, we we'll get about three quarters of a million dollars of new tax revenues. We hired a firm called Phillips Price that did our fiscal analysis, and then the town has its own consultants that reviewed those numbers and find on them. So there are no new school age children that will be generated by this project. So all the revenues that are, um, are targeted for the school uh, don't have any offset offsetting costs. And that's it. Any questions? Well, well actually, I, I have questions. Um, I'm just curious about the. Uh, you said you had uh, calls or interested parties uh, inquiring about the project. Yes. Is is there such a thing as free selling here, or is it allowed? For free selling. Not this stage. Yeah. We don't even, you know, not. not. Right. <laughs> that would be a risk. That would be a risk. Yeah. Couldn't take any money. That's, that's not something yeah. that the town would get involved in. You know, I'm, I'm just curious. You know, we're not nowhere near any of that. Okay. But we, there are people. Uh, there was one woman who is a recent uh, widow, widower, widow, and uh, she has called me. A bunch of people have called me. Yeah. Now, for the affordable um, units, uh, mm -hmm. they started at 1,400 square feet. 
and then they jump to 1700 square feet with three bedrooms. Okay, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, do any of the units have active attic um, space, or uh, I'm just curious in terms of? Uh, they all will probably have drop down stairs. Okay, but I'm just curious with the the height of the attic. Um, that I mean, more than eight feet. Oh or... gosh, I've not even thought that through. Oh, uh, okay. but they're fairly peaked roofs. Um, the ability to get any additional FAR or additional is, you know, yeah, that's what I'm asking, wondering. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the um, uh, comp, the uh, areas will have um, locked, will have full height ceilings that will utilize the um, the dorm, not the dormers, the uh, forward facing um, roof lines. I'm trying to think of the right word. What could be the biggest in, uh, in FAR? Any attic space, regardless if there's usable or there's flooring on it, as long as it has more than eight feet, it's counted to its square footage. Uh, yeah. so it, that's why I was, I was not, asking. No, I never thought that. The applicant, you're proposing to use an existing multi family zone that within the town. Mm -hmm. um, so there are already fault regulations that are in place for that. So FAR height, uh, setbacks, whatnot. Um, so, you know, I think part of what the um, analysis and review of the FEIS is going to be is assessing whether or not there will be any variances that will be necessary um, in accordance with what those um, zoning regulations currently are. Yeah, I just, just to add to that question, though, the profile of the buyer, most of these people all they want is a den and maybe a second and a second bedroom. These have dens and second bedrooms, but the likelihood of them doing something beyond that is remote. One I thought of as many asked, what's the affordability? Are they 60% AMR? 60 AMR. Yeah. 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 Um, the executive summary, um, it says there's one additional unit for a total of 96. Is it 95 or 96? It's 95. I'm not okay. sure what you yeah, yeah, I've read that. It makes a total of 96. Just, I'll want to look afterwards. I just, you know, I just don't yeah. sit here. And, sure. and then since this is the board's document, ultimately, there, I, there's a response in here, and I haven't gotten through a lot. Um, I would just encourage the applicant. I'm sure there's emotions of this. You've been working on this project a long time. But if there is um, a chance to just say comment noted instead of anything that's kind of trying to be defensive. I, I can point out the comment or the response, but I can point it to you as well. Just I, the applicant views this comment that completely ignores the purpose of the project and the comment simply implies less is more, but with no rationale. That might be a fair response. I don't think it's a response that we would parse that way. So I think just to be careful to choose how to respond to comments, even if you- We've the spent a lot of time on responding understood. to the months. Understood. Yeah, the the uh, the ninety six is actually on page I one dash four. Um, that says if one additional unit for a total of ninety six has been added to the uh, final EIS plan versus the supplemental Yeah. I four and Roman two page one. So that's the affordable. So just to, to respond to some of the comments or comments that really are not answerable. Understood. Comment noted. You know, I mean, it's a comment, and you really doesn't have a finite answer to it. So comment noted is probably sufficient for some of those. Yeah. We'll we'll just we'll we'll have to think about you know what what we're talking about in terms of substantive okay. issues versus you know. Um, commentary. And still, in front of the public, a lot of them are not answerable and they are soliloquies of opinions. They're not comments. So I get it. I just encourage. Any other questions on the changes at this point? No. I think no, they're positive. I think you answered. They're, they're good changes, especially yeah. they're attainable. I know that was. Right. Okay. Right. Turn it off. Um, yeah. Thank you. So now, so I guess the, we were going to ask the board just 
formally acknowledge the receipt of the FEIS and authorize the, the consultants to the begin their itself. review. Okay. Um, is it something done by motion? Just be, yeah, it'll, it'll okay. just start. Yeah, the, okay. I'll make a motion to accept the yes. acknowledge receipt. Receive. Acknowledge receipt. That's why. Second. Second. Uh, Jim, how do you vote? Yes. 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 And I vote yes as well. And now instruct the different consultants. Yeah. So, so based on um, based on the revisions that have took place, uh, that took place in this uh, next uh, version that has been part of the FEIS, um, a number of our comments really focused on the first version. So we will be looking at you know does the does the amended plan now address some of those comments and those comments maybe you know, don't need to be as technically as drawn as they were originally asked for because of the revisions to the, the plan. Um, if the board, we, I was anticipating having, and Dan, I don't know if this also works with you, but I was anticipating having a memo for the, the board's review for the March 15th meeting. Okay. Um, I don't know if this board feels that we need to have like a meet, you know, a work session ahead of time, or whether you just feel comfortable with us just reviewing and identifying any last remaining edits that might be needed. Okay. Yeah, you can email me any comment. Defer to them on the first pass. Okay. And we can reach out if we get a question somewhere. Right, right. You know, definitely if you come across anything that, you know, you might overlook, then, you know. And, and just to remind the board that the FEIS is your document technically, right. um, but it's not the last step in the secret process, right? No. So even after you get after it, get over this step, then there's the next process of doing a finding statement, mm -hmm. which is going to pretty much be will also be your document and will be and will also be adopted by um, in some format, whichever they may choose. Any other involved agencies, um, such as the town board for the zoning, the zoning board, if they end up needing variances, yes. um, so that that's you know it's a, it, this is a, an important step in the process, right. but it's not the final right. step in the yeah. process. Yeah. It's a little bit of a concern. Yes. for site plan. Yes. Right. Yeah. So uh, I have a question. So after reviewing this um, FEIS, the Involved agencies that has to approve everything. I mean, have, have we gone through this? With we're, we're going to go through this for for every for the because we reviewed the site plan in the draft, uh, and then this is the final. So we're going to review, go through the same review process again. No, it, you can no. certainly utilize a lot of the information and review you've already done. Yeah. Um, there may be some more technical aspects of it. Um, in terms of the, the site plans once you get past the secret review. But the example. DEIS is not going to be updated. Okay. So the DEIS is like the FEIS is almost like it basically it's supposed to be final. It is, but the FEIS, the document itself is the document you see where it's just responses to the comments in the DEIS. And technically in totality, the DEIS and the FEIS constitute um, the EIS. It, final final is kind of a misnomer yeah. in this context okay. you know it doesn't mean revising the deis it means that based upon the as valerie was saying based upon the comments that were received on the draft environmental impact statement um feis constitutes those responses okay so the finding statement if the board ultimately finds that the revised plan as put forth in the FEIS is a better plan and less environmentally impactful, then the findings would then state that that plan is ultimately the plan that would be adopted as you know in your finding statement as moving forward with that concept. Any other questions? Um, no. Jason, any? no. So, in your review of the FEIS, my advice would be just make sure, especially the comments you were most concerned with, that you feel have been adequately addressed either through the redesign of the site plan or in, as a response 
to your comment. Right. Okay. Um, so um, we have two sets of minutes. Thank you. 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 Thank Jason, can you vote? Yes. Annie, can you vote? Yes. Can I vote yes as well? Um, we have the January 18th, 2023 minutes. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions concerning those minutes? Uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, to accept the January 18th, 2023 meeting minutes. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you. Um, and how do you vote, Jason? Yes. Can you vote, Manny? Yes. Can I vote that as well? May I vote second? Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, anybody? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Um, Jim, can you vote? <laughs> <laughs> David. Well, we guys, but I'll vote yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And we need to Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. This is completely inappropriate. It's not a response. It's, I understand. Yeah, I agree. We'll, we'll